sides, but you'll see as the plane tilts back and forth, it's flat. That is not a curve. If you want to picture that as a curve, then you need to continue that circle out. Imagine drawing that line all the way out as a circle. It would be about a hundred times bigger than the Earth. Not possible. Not even a bit. Hello and welcome to Flat Earth vs. Round Earth. What you just saw was a clip from a flat earther that I like named Jaronism. He's a fun guy and I think he's definitely worth checking out. So even if you disagree with him, he's still pretty entertaining. But uh, him and a few others are the reason I started to take the flat earth theory seriously and inspired me to create my own series testing both theories. I want to be as open minded as possible and look at all the evidence provided before coming to any conclusions. So let's start by looking at the contenders. Up first, the challenger, Flat Earth. Flat Earthers believe in the geocentric model. The Earth is the fixed, motionless center of the universe, the sun and the moon rotate over and around the Flat Earth, and the stars act like a rotating planetarium dome revolving around the North Star Polaris. We are being lied to by NASA and the government, and space travel is faked to keep everyone ignorant of the truth. The Earth is flat. And the defending champion, Round Earth. Ball Earthers believe in the heliocentric model. The Earth is a sphere rotating on an axis, orbiting around the Sun, while the Moon orbits around the Earth. Our Sun is only one of the billions of stars in our Milky Way galaxy, and our galaxy is only one of the trillions of galaxies that populate the whole universe. These systems are bound by the law of gravity. They say mankind has achieved spaceflight and provided pictures of the truth. The Earth is a sphere. Good luck, and may the best Earth win. So I decided to start this off with a very popular topic, the horizon. Uh, another flat earther that I like is Eric Dubay. In his horizon video he shows that from our perspective the horizon looks flat and appears to stay at eye level no matter how high we are. The horizon is not actually the curve of the Earth, but is what we see from our perspective. Parallel lines appear to converge towards a single point called the vanishing point, so the horizon is simply the vanishing line from our perspective. To test this, I'd like to see if I can recreate what we see in a 3D program. So my first question, what is the size of the flat earth? Many of the answers I found range from a circumference of 25,000 to 60,000 miles, but the majority of flat earthers give a lot of credit to a man named Samuel Burley Robotham. During the mid-1800s, he wrote a book called Zetetic Astronomy, Earth, Not a Globe based off of his decade-long scientific studies of Earth. In his book, he states that the circumference is 52,800 miles, so I'll just use his calculation. So in Unity, I created a flat plane and scaled the width and length to 100,000 units. If we consider one unit to equal six feet, then we are looking at a surface area of 600,000 square feet, or a little under 114 square miles. Using Robotham's calculation, that would only be about this big on the Flat Earth model. Next, I created a single giant rectangle cloud uh, that is most commonly seen in nature, or Minecraft, at the equivalent altitude of 25,000 feet. When I start zooming in, you can see my tic-tac-shaped friend that I named Phil. As you can see, I made Phil his very own little one-road city. The buildings are all the equivalent of 600 feet tall, and the camera is positioned 6 feet above the road. This is what it looks like from Phil's perspective. This road is 3 miles long, which is the distance to the horizon from the eye level of 6 feet if the Earth was a sphere. I placed the buildings at various distances to get an idea of perspective. From right to left, it's 120 feet, 300 feet, 600 feet, 1 mile, 1.5 miles, 3 miles at the end of the road, and then 6, 12, 24, and 48 miles. If I click play, the first thing I notice is the horizon appears to match up exactly with the top of the three mile road and the bottom of the three mile building. Everything appears to get smaller as it gets farther away and converges at the vanishing line. If I jump up, the horizon appears to remain at eye level, and if I bust a sick, wicked 360 spin, the horizon appears flat all the way around. So the flat earth model is looking pretty good. Let's look at the sphere model. I wanted to scale down the Earth far enough to display the curve accurately on screen, and it turns out, not that easy. But I believe I found a solution. 
Since a circle is just a two-dimensional sphere, looking at the outside of a circle will produce the same effect as looking at the horizon. We can achieve a scaled-down version of Earth using vectors. So what's a vector image? Raster images like JPEGs, GIFs, and PNGs use a fixed number of colored pixels, so the picture loses quality and becomes pixelated as it becomes larger. Vector images, on the other hand, use mathematical calculations from one point to another to display geometrical shapes, so they can potentially be enlarged to any size without loss of quality. In Adobe Illustrator, software for vector graphics, a maximum canvas size is a height and width of 16,383 pixels, so I need to scale down the Earth inside of that. If the circumference of Earth is 24,901 miles, that would be a diameter of 7,926 miles, which is over 41.8 million feet. Using a person's height of 6 feet, we can get our scale. If the diameter is 16,000 pixels, then 6 feet would equal 0 .002 pixels. So here's what the Earth would look like if we scaled it all the way down to 16,000 pixels. If I zoom in, we can see just how tiny we would be on the Sphere Earth model. I don't know if you can see it, but that little tiny dot would be us. I'll name him Stephen. Next to Stephen is the Burj Khalifa over 2,700 feet tall. I made Stephen his own little private island that's three miles long. And even though Stephen knows he's on a circle, the island looks completely flat. I've added a couple of different altitudes to get a better sense of scale. So here's Mount Everest over 29,000 feet, and then a high altitude airplane at an altitude of 40,000 feet. And this right here is a 250 foot long 747 on this scale. It's insane how small we would be on the Sphere Earth model. If I zoom out, we can see on this model what a 245.2 mile straight line would look like. This would be the distance to the horizon from 40,000 feet, so what you would see from an airplane. If I remove the line, you can see just how small the curve would look from an airplane. It would be even less of a curve if you include the clouds. If I zoom out, we begin to see a more noticeable curve. This line is 384 miles long and is the distance to the horizon from 98,000 feet, which is over 18 miles. But is this enough for proof? How high would we need to be? The last line I made is 568 miles long, which is the distance to the horizon at 214,000 feet, which is a whopping 40 and a half miles. Even at this height, is that enough curvature to be undeniable? If we saw footage, if we were all sitting in a room and saw footage from a non-distorted camera from this height, would every single one of us agree the horizon is curved? No idea. In Photoshop, I grabbed an image of the horizon over some water. As we expect, the horizon appears straight. But if I added a straight line and zoomed in, we can see that as I scroll to the right, the water appears to curve down and away from the line. This doesn't really mean anything because this could be from the distortion of the lens, a mistake that I've made, or the water is not exactly level with the camera. I just wanted to show that even though something appears straight, it might not be, and vice versa. The other picture I grabbed was taken from an airplane. The horizon definitely appears curved, but once again, that could be from the distortion of the lens or the distortion of the window of the airplane. I just want to show the difference of the horizon to eye level. If this image was taken at 40,000 feet, the horizon would be 245 miles away. In 245 miles, the Earth would curve down by 7.6 miles, which is only 0.03% lower than on a flat plane. Calculating the pixels from the bottom of the image to the line, 0.03% would be about 39 pixels. So if the Earth was a sphere, the horizon on a flat plane would be right here. The amount of drop is much less than I thought it would be it'd be very difficult to prove whether the drop exists or not. You'd have to prove that the airplane and the camera was completely level with the ground. The next proof is the angle of objects in the distance. Another common argument is that we should be able to noticeably see an object angle away from us. This is correct, right? An object should angle away from the viewer on a sphere, but by how much? If we divide the circumference of 24,901 by 360, 
we get 69.2. So it's nearly 70 miles for one degree, which is only 0 0.014 degrees every mile. Even if you saw a ship at sea 25 miles away, it would only be angling away from you by 0.36 degrees. So because the distance is so far and the angle is so small, visual evidence of this would most likely not be very convincing. So if we go back to our friend Phil here, I added two more buildings at a distance of three miles. The second building on the left is turned away from Phil by 45 degrees and then both the buildings are angled away from him by one degree. So if I hit play and compare the new buildings with the straight ones from before, I can't even tell that they're angled away from us at three miles, let alone 70. To use this as proof, one would have to show the angle or lack thereof at a distance of over 20 times that. Just to check, I did add a building 70 miles away behind this one. So if I raise fill up high and zoom in, we can see it. And even zoomed in, there appears to be no visible evidence of the one degree angle. The last proof I'd like to look at in this video is objects over the horizon. If the Earth was truly a sphere, then we would see evidence of objects hidden behind the curvature of the Earth. Therefore, we should be able to perform experiments that can only be done on a flat Earth. In another Jaronism video, he performed an experiment that should only be possible on a flat Earth. He uses a camera to see a laser shot onto a board, and he gives the specifics in the video. The video was taken from Lover's Point Pacific Grove, California, to Sand City, California, which is a distance of 4.07 miles. If we trust his measurements, then the camera was on a tripod at a height of 30 inches, and the laser was still visible 6 inches above the ground. Jaronism states that at 4 miles, the Earth has a curvature of 10 feet, Therefore, this test would be impossible on the globe Earth. Okay, so to make things a little easier, I made a calculator in Google Sheets. So if you'd like to use it for yourself, you can download it from my blog. I'll put a link in the description. I'd be happy to explain the math in another video if anyone wants, but for now I'm just going to quickly explain how it works. I set it up so that all the equations reflect the radius of the Earth. So just use the yellow boxes to enter in your numbers. So if you use a circumference of 24,901, then the equations below will use the radius of 3963. I also added a conversion calculator just in case. So then scrolling down, I have three different equations to calculate curvature. The first is the standard zetetic equation used by most, most flat earthers, which is the square of the miles multiplied by eight. I also have the Pythagorean theorem, and then the most accurate is the trig formula. The Pythagorean theorem and the Zetetic are pretty accurate until you start getting above about 100 miles. So it's nice to kind of have the, the trig formula. And you can kind of just see um, what the three different calculations will produce, you know, to get more accurate. And then the last part of the calculator is line of sight. So using the Pythagorean theorem, you can calculate distance to the horizon. There's also the approximate method, which is just the square root of the height multiplied by 1.225. And then if you need to account for refraction, I have the approximate method for that as well. So if you enter in the eye level and the object height above sea level, you can see the max distance it should be visible. If you know the distance, you can calculate the amount visible above and the amount hidden below the curvature if the Earth was a ball. So going back to Jaronism's test, if the camera is at 30 inches, we can enter in 2.5 feet. And if the laser is at 6 inches, we enter in half a foot. And then we can see that he is completely correct. At a distance of four miles, the laser would be hidden behind the curvature of the Earth. The maximum distance to even see an object at that height is 2.8 miles. So the laser should be well below the horizon by over two feet. But let's double check his measurements. So using Google Earth, I plotted the two locations, which does turn out to be about four miles. Unfortunately, he was not completely exact on where the camera and laser were located. But looking at the video, the camera was behind this rock by at least a couple feet. And then it's just kind of guessing for the laser is. But on the bottom right of the Google Earth screen, it shows the elevation. The beach around the laser location ranges anywhere from four to 16 feet. So I'll just use four feet because it looks like he was a little closer to the water. And then if I scroll back over and then look at the area around the camera, the elevation is about five feet. So going back to the calculator, if we add 5 feet to the camera and then 4 feet to the laser, we get some different results. 
4.22 feet would still be visible above the curvature. Uh, he did also say that there are about three foot waves. So even if we include that, I mean, one foot would still be visible. So considering elevation, it is entirely possible to see the laser on a sphere Earth. So to just visually look at it, I made a quick illustration. The width is not to scale, but for the height, I used one pixel per inch to make that as accurate as I could. The highest point in the middle of the water would be 32 inches over four miles. And then even considering the three foot waves, the laser would be visible on both the flat and round earth models. So at the end of round one, both fighters appear unfaced. If we look at the fight recap, number one, it is completely possible for the horizon to appear flat on both the flat and round earth models. You would have to go very high up before seeing any large amounts of curvature. Number two, the small drop of the horizon on the round earth model would be very difficult to prove as you gain altitude. You'd have to have some way to prove that the camera is completely parallel with the ground. Number three, it'd be very difficult to prove the non-existence of an object's angle due to how small the angle is and how far the distance is. And then finally, I respect Jaronism for going out and doing his test. But if you factor in the elevation, the laser would easily be visible on the round earth model. So seriously, please do not hesitate to comment and provide feedback. Let me know if I made any mistakes or if there's something to add more detail on, specific topics to cover in the future, or just general questions and suggestions. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you for the next round.